Cry 4 was one of the dominant shooters of 2014, and it was GT's Shooter of the Year. We've been given various add-ons to the core campaign like weapons, missions, and modes, but Valley of the Yetis is the first expansion to enter completely new territory. In the new chapter, series star AJ Gale heads to even higher altitudes in search of a lost relic protected by legendary monsters. There's some bits of treasure scattered about, but this new excursion still feels like more of the same. Soon after you reach the valley, you discover a relay station that can be captured with minimal effort. Once it's under your control, you have to defend it against attacks from an indigenous cult to then unlock missions in the campaign. Permanent defenses like barriers and mounted weapons can be purchased, and a few can be acquired for free after completing quests like stealing and delivering enemy vehicles. Valley of the Yetis is a lightning round of Far Cry 4's progression system. Everything advances at a faster rate. You can pick up new weapons right off the map instead of unlocking them by liberating radio towers. Animal skin needed to upgrade item storage is found in specific chests instead of on each individual animal, with a few exceptions that can survive in the colder climate. The map feels smaller than the first half of Far Cry 4. Snowmobiles are added to the garage, and though Jeeps are not emphasized as much as before, it never takes too long to get anywhere. Depending on your investment in the central campaign of Far Cry 4, it's not that exciting leveling your skills and weapons all over again. You can't take anything into the mode from the campaign or bring anything back. We can understand losing your arsenal, but it's never explained how or why AJ forgets all of his skills. Thankfully, you unlock a gyrocopter when all of the campaign missions are completed, in case there were some hard-to-reach items on the map that you missed. The biggest visual difference in this corner of Karat is the abundance of snow and ice. Almost all of the water is frozen over, and there are a few spots where you can jump your newly acquired snowmobile when cruising around. A later section reintroduces oxygen pickups to survive at high altitudes, but the frigid landscape just feels like the old map with a white blanket thrown over it. Then there's the issue of the titular behemoths that roam the land. The expansion does a good job of easing you into their existence, forcing you to evade them without the proper equipment. But after you encounter them a few times out in the open, they become a nuisance rather than something to fear. It's not that difficult to dodge their ranged attacks and pick a safe spot to deal damage from. One area kept infinitely spawning them, making their mystique evaporate. The greatest disappointment is the lack of storytelling and new characters. There are cultists prepared to attack on sight, and unlike the central campaign of Far Cry 4, there are no citizens to avoid or karma to keep track of outside of a handful of wandering merchants. But anyone that tells you what's going on in the world only speaks through a radio. The cult has a maniacal leader that you never confront in person, and you only have a patchy line of communication with the Golden Path. The ending is also painfully abrupt, good for a laugh instead of a moment of calm reflection. The best thing Valley of the Yetis has going for it is the inherent fun that comes from using Far Cry 4 skills, weapons, and vehicles. Everything else feels wasted. The station defense battles are spectacles, but not that challenging. The Yetis are intimidating, but don't stay scary for long. With no legitimate lead into or out of the story, it's hard to take any of it seriously. It's definitely the biggest chunk of extra content to come out of the game, but not the best. Did you enjoy my little rescue party last night? Yeah, real blast. <laughs>